Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Antenna Man, and today I'm going to talk about antenna signal meters. In many cases, they're absolutely critical to getting the best reception possible when setting up an antenna, yet very few people use them. What are the best signal meters for antennas? Stay tuned to find out. If you're seeing me for the first time, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little bell icon to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. For those of you who are not subscribed or may not be getting notifications, I try to post videos every Tuesday and Friday. So you never want to just put an antenna up in a random spot, point it even if you're using a compass, and hope for the best as you won't see what channels you're picking up with the antenna. At some locations, moving the antenna as little as a foot or two can have a huge impact on reception, especially if there are a lot of trees around. Some type of signal meter is critical to find the best spot for reception when setting up an antenna. I can't tell you how many times I went to install an antenna and plan to mount it in a specific spot like the peak of the roof, and then when I checked the reception with my signal meter, I noticed one station wasn't coming in that well. Using the signal meter as a guide, I moved the antenna around until I got reliable reception of the problematic channel. If you decide to purchase one of these signal meters, please follow one of my affiliate links in the pinned comment below or description of the video to help support my YouTube channel. The first type of signal meters for antennas I'm going to talk about are consumer grade ones. They're relatively inexpensive and very easy to use. If you have an indoor antenna, location is super critical for optimal reception. Since most TVs don't have a signal meter, many people are just kind of moving the antenna around, running channel scans, and hoping for the best. That's not the way to do it. The Mediasonic Homeworks DTV box has a built-in signal meter feature. Here's an example of me using it. Say you're using an indoor antenna. On most TV sets, you don't really have an indication of what you're getting besides a few pixels. Most of you are probably just moving the antenna around and hoping for the best. Well, with this DTV box, if you press the info button twice, it'll bring up the signal meter, and you can see as I move the antenna around, the number changes. And the goal is to find a spot to get that signal level as high as possible, so you see it's starting to get up towards the 70s in one spot. This takes time, but having a signal meter is critical to do this. An additional benefit of this DTV box is the manual input, which can help you lock in a TV station that doesn't show up on a channel scan. Say for example, I'm not getting in NBC10 from Philadelphia with the antenna I have. It broadcasts on UHF channel 28. If I manually input channel 28, you'll see it's, it's not on there right now. But as I move the antenna around until I see something come up on the signal meter, you saw it come up a bit, you move it until you find a spot where you're able to lock it in. Just give me like a minute to try this out. There we go. You see that there are levels on the screen now. If I press OK, it will lock in that channel. And this is a lot better than running a whole bunch of rescans and hoping for the best. And then once I have the channel, all I do is I press the info button twice to get up the signal meter and move the antenna around to find the best spot for it. Obviously, an indoor antenna isn't the best in my situation, but having this signal meter really is the key to get the best reception possible with an indoor antenna. You can find a link to the Mediasonic Homeworks DTV box in the pinned comment below or in the description of the video. If you're using an indoor antenna, make sure you have a quality RG6 quad shield cable. A lot of generic flat antennas have hair-thin coaxial cables built in that you can't remove, and these will absolutely kill your signal. Just look how thin it is. Another decent consumer-grade signal meter is one on the 7-inch portable battery-powered TV set. This is better if you have an outdoor setup and is personally what I used when installing antennas. If you go to the menu and then channel, you'll see a signal indicator at the bottom of the screen. It lists whether the signal is bad, normal, or good. Ignore the appearance of this TV as it's gone through a lot over the past two years, including falling off several rooftops. While the TV doesn't show a signal percentage, I still found it to be very helpful since you can sort of fine tune a bad or normal signal into a good signal. Just like with the DTV boxes, you can manually add RF channels from the remote. The only difference is that there has to be a viewable signal in order to add the channel. If you have trouble adding a specific channel on the list, it might be worth traveling to a location closer to the broadcast towers to run a channel scan on the TV. 
That way you'll have all channels on the TV set to check when setting up an antenna or adjusting what you have now. The seven inch TV is made by various companies, including Milonix, Supersonic, and Tyler. They are all the same TV, just marketed under different brands. You can find links to all of them attached in the description of the video. One important thing to note about these portable TV sets, the coax adapter that comes with them to connect an external antenna is not the best. It's thin and has some signal loss. If you want the best connection, use a quick release adapter, which I attached also in the description of the video. Beyond these two consumer grade signal meters, there are more professional grade meters. They show specific technical detail best suited for a hardcore antenna enthusiast or antenna installer. Channel Master and WineGuard each make one. Here's a clip of the Channel Master signal meter, which you'll see more of in a future video on my channel. One screen shows the signals of all the RF channels on a graph. You can see that there are some high levels of 5G and LTE on the upper UHF channels, indicating that I may need an LTE filter. You can also select a specific RF channel and watch a signal as you adjust the antenna. There's a tone that changes pitch as the signal level increases. The meter will also show you whether the 8VSB carrier is being locked in along with the amount of errors. You can see that RF channel 25 is cutting in and out. While these signal meters are very handy to get detailed numbers as high as possible with an outdoor antenna, they might be tricky to understand for the average person. You have to type in the RF channel of TV stations in your market. For example, if I wanted to tune to CBS3 out of Philadelphia, I'd have to go to channel 30 because that's the channel the station broadcasts on. If I want to check NBC10, I'd have to go to channel 28. This might be confusing to the average person who doesn't understand what I've been saying in every antenna review of mine. Most TV stations don't necessarily broadcast on a channel number you may know them as. If you understand that your local channel 2 might be broadcasting on UHF channel 23, you have the knowledge to use these types of meters. If you don't understand virtual and RF channels, stick to one of the consumer grade models. Now, one of the best signal meters out there is a bit more expensive, but definitely worth it if you're a hardcore antenna enthusiast or professional installer. It's the Televis H30. This has all the benefits of the previous signal meters and more. It provides technical detail of each RF channel, a spectrum analyzer, and has a built-in tuner so you can check the TV station for any breakup. You can find a link to the Televis H30 attached in the description of the video. Whether you have an indoor, attic, or outdoor antenna, it's critical to use some kind of TV tuner or signal meter as a guide when positioning the antenna. While a signal meter can help fine tune an antenna to get better reception, it's important that you have the right antenna for your area. Too many people go for smaller antenna models like these the first time they cut the cord. They will only work in fair to strong signal areas. If your signals are marginal, you have a lot of trees around, or if you have low VHF stations in your area, you will need a larger antenna. This is why I offer antenna recommendations on my website at antennamanpa.com. For a small fee, I run a reception report at your location, take a look at the frequencies and signal strength, determine what antenna would work best for you based on my experience actually testing out 50 antenna models and installing them in four TV markets. I can also help troubleshoot problems with an existing antenna setup. Many times, people may have the right antenna, but mess up their reception with a bad amplifier, coaxial cable, unpowered splitter, the list goes on and on. If you want to solve those reception problems once and for all, consider an antenna recommendation from me. Thanks again for watching this YouTube video, and be sure to share it as well. I feel that there are too many people out there that try to cut the cord, but then get an antenna like this and don't use a signal mirror like, oh, I got this HD antenna. Why can't I get good reception? ABC doesn't come in. I'm going to keep paying for cable and satellite. Don't do that. Tell them about my channel so they can actually cut the cord once and for all. Additional thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon or is a member of my YouTube channel. If my videos have helped you cut the cord and you'd like to support them while gaining exclusive perks, such as behind the scenes content, access to my videos ad free one day early, and direct contact with me, visit patreon.com forward slash antenna man or click the join button in this video. If you're on Facebook, you can like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you're not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates when I post new videos, feel free to sign up to my email list. I attach a link in the description of the video. 
As a reminder, I'm trying to post videos every Tuesday and Friday for those of you that may not really use email, Facebook, any of that stuff. Just check my YouTube channel on Tuesday and Friday and you should see a video on there. Stay tuned to it for more cord cutting antenna related videos and have an awesome day.